If you're a Highlander, mind that bit where Sean Connery's down in the beach with McLeod. He's going on about feeling the stag, Sean Connery's getting all that. Can you feel his heartbeat, McLeod? And then they'll howl. Oh! <laughs> Come on, Mozzie! Let's go, let's go! Somewhere pretty special. Check this out. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. There's this sea stack, it's called Bow Fiddle Rock. Who are you hunting for? Oh! Aye, Bow Fiddle Rock. It's meant to look like the bow. This is the fiddle and that's the bow. That's the idea behind it. Brilliant. Oh, cave. Didn't notice that. Whoa! Big breaker. Yes. Fucking Nora. Pigeons. I thought that was Batman. If you were a maniac, you'd go away up in there, you'd climb up in there with a head torch, you'd get stuck. It's glad to report there's no toilet roll or tollies. Go a wee Barry Marcel, actually. This guy. Oh, what are you doing up? All the birds are out. It's kind of so nice here that you don't, I don't, it's almost like I don't want to leave. If it wasn't so cold at night still, I would have probably came and camped down here. Got full of the drink. That's where you end up drowned, isn't it? If you're thinking it's a brilliant idea to go out swimming in the North Sea, four in the morning, boozed. I'm a good swimmer, me. <laughs> Pull away out of me on the currents. That's just up the top. You can see the car's just there. It's just a wee path down. So it's really accessible. The sun's out, it's brilliant. It's totally lovely here. It's what a great day. Big ship or what is that, a rig? So this is the wee town. This is just we you having a trek. Quite uh, quaint, you know. Oh, we stop you. Moan, moan alone. Well, look how nice these wee towns are. And the church. And this will be Lossy Mouth up here. It's rel it's, Lossy Mouth is relatively big, you know. It's a nice wee beach here. Bucky, historic fishing town. That's the sort of boat I want. Just a wee one like that. Couple outboards. Actually, they're produced in Scotland. Stuff that is it, what's it called? It can't be the Highlander. I think they're about five grand eh, for the boat and then you need the engines. I love harbours. Something so cool. Where I used to live, there was a, eh, down at the harbour, there was one of these. It was actually a, a North Sea survival boat that eh, basically, if there was a, a problem on the rigs and you had to abandon ship, you jumped in these boats. They were covered and you get launched off the side tsh, into the sea and uh, they would just toodle along until you got properly rescued and we would always jump on it and explore it. It looked cool, it was like some sort of crazy submarine. The fact that it got dropped into the ocean, it actually goes underwater before coming up. Totally awesome. Here's the lifeboat services here. Don't know what's going on with this boat here. Eternal light, it's like a, like a shoebox in the ocean, isn't it? It's quite unfortunate. Sorry if you're watching this, mate. Your boat's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Moss. See that dog, by the way? Look at her back there. Eh? Back there, moaning. Moaning for what? What are you moaning for? What are you wanting? It's bloody treats. That's what it is. There's a harbour. Fish market. Look at this. This reminds me of growing up. It, that's, it's like when I was driving up last night, it was only half ten and all the villages I drove through, they, it looked like everyone had went to bed. It was totally dead. And look, there's nobody about. 21 minutes past eight, surely not everyone's still in bed. Is that, is, I think that's a big, I think that's all beach all along there. Quite fancy doing some beach walking as well, you know. There's someone with their dog. The one person. There's another person. Trampoline park coming soon. Whoa. Oh, for God's sake. You imagine that? Folk all the way up here. Just going to a big warehouse to jump up and down trampolines. <laughs> Great fun. That's probably where they all were last night in the day. They're probably all in there bouncing about. We were up here on holiday once when we were we. I remember. Port Soy, it's called. It's further back along the coast. Baxter soup. 
That's where your Baxter soup's made in there. This is West Beach. Oh, Lighthouse. We'll have to go to that. How'd you get down there? That sign back there, right. 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 We've got some food. We just stopped at the co-op. We got fuel. Stopped at the co-op. I think what we'll do is walk along to the lighthouse along this East Beach and then or is this aye, this is East Beach. And then no it's not. Wait a minute. This must be West Beach. And then we'll go back along and there's a trail we can do along the East Beach and then we'll go back to the Bow Fiddle Rock and we'll do that circular hike, get some dinner and uh, that should be us. Hopefully see some northern lights tonight. So that'll be awesome. So that's us down at the beach and gonna see about hiking along the beach there to that lighthouse and we'll just come right back and then we'll go to the other beach. Moss, I'm just making up some rolls here. Some ham, chorizo, some rolls. I'm gonna eat this one now and we'll put these in the pack for later on. But Moss has been eating the spare meat and slavering all over them. So that's the lighthouse. Check this out. 1826, 16 ships sunk. It'd be awesome if we could see some seals. Ah. Oh, oh, that would be cool to see some Pictish symbols. This is cool. This is part of the Moray Coastal Trail. And uh, I'd looked that up. There's like a Speyside Way and all this as well. But it looks really interesting. I'd actually quite look. I mean, look at this. Don't get me wrong, it's windy, so it's pretty damn cold. It's pretty awesome, for sure. Aye, so apparently these things are called Dragon's Teeth. And uh, this is ba that's basically to stop tanks. That was meant to impede the tank's progress. It's a pure strong headwind, I'm only able to run at about two mile an hour. <laughs> it's probably about the same as walking speed. Aye. This will be for planes coming on. See the, the lights? That'll be for planes, so, well, yes. This is brilliant, this. This bit of beach. I think the other one's even, I think the other one's even better than this. We could dig for those sand worms. Here, man, there's Mosey away. Ah! Come on, Mosey. Oh, it's going this way! <laughs> uh, oh. So windy, look! So windy, it just keeps coming back on us! I mean, my sash is all over the shop. Look at that, I'll mock it now! Look at that! Oh, minging! Uh, there's many of them, pulling them back! on the lighthouse here and we can see the caves and on that info board it said that travellers used to stay in these and all that wonder when that was what time period and here's the lookout bunker from war, the world war ii so let's go into one of the caves Aye, it's a wee bit pushy in here. Um, I, I, I normally expect that in places like this that are more accessible to the public. It's hard to think that anyone would live in here, but I guess if you had stuff laid out and all that, you're up off the ground, you could have summon over the, over the door, it might not be too bad. folk would 
shouldn't do this. It's not even good. I say this all the time. See if you're going to do graffiti, make it decent and, and, and don't do it here. Do it in your, the side of your crappy house. Oscar. For. Fuck you, Oscar. Don't you go right in there, by the way, you'll end up getting trapped under ice. So you will. Folk will have, like, no doubt in my mind. See this darkening of the rock? Like over here. All this darkening. I think that's all from fires that have been lit at the back at the backs of these caves. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I reckon there, that's, that's, fire, that's soot, see it? I think that's all soot for fires. Probably been folk living in here for thousands of years, for ages. And look, see how it's all up the back. That's cool. Yeah, really cool. That'll be thousands of years of fire. People have been in, well, have been in these caves for yonks, absolute yonks. So, and you can imagine this being quite an attractive location, can't you? I mean, I doubt this, they wouldn't have stayed, like, that wouldn't have been their home like Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble, you know what I mean? Their feet out the bottom of the motor, like that, doo -doo 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 -doo, pushing their square wheeled motors up and down here. Well, it wouldn't be a motor, would it? Because they were nom nomadic, they were hunter-gatherers. They moved with the seasons and the the food. Look how cool that is. They moved with the seasons and the animals, didn't they? And in, in resource, basically. If it was abundant, they would have stayed. If uh, food was scarce they would have moved on. Check this one by the way. I used to love coming here to places like this, getting in about all these rock pools like, what's that bro? Nah, what's that? Would it, would it attach to me? And then you've seen facehuggers for aliens and all that and you're like, ah, limpets. Right, so let's see about getting up to this lighthouse here. I've actually been right up in the top of a lighthouse before. We, eh, uh, aye, there's a wee signpost here. Some of the work we do is on various sites. Some of them are Met Office sites and some of the Met Office sites are at the likes of lighthouses. We ended up putting some equipment up uh, halfway up a lighthouse. And when I was there, the guy asked me if I wanted to go up to the top to see it. It was totally cool, it's up the northwest of Scotland. So, absolutely epic, you know. Hey, what do we have here? Where are you, Moss? Aye, there you are. That's just starting to warm up. I don't know what time it is actually, wait and I'll check. It's only half ten. Jeez, oh, I thought it might be about midday. Uh, it'll warm up. Come noon, it'll be, be plenty warm. With that sun blaring out. Right, let's check this out. You coming up to the lighthouse, Moss? Come on up this way. Come on. Come on up this way. Hey, oh, you're burnt out, aren't you? Hey, here we go. Let's folk at it. Well, looks like uh, there's a letterbox on it. Sometimes they have little holiday homes so you can actually stay at lighthouses. So this might be, they might have converted this here and that might be folk in their holidays. How cool is that, but it'd be cool to fly the drone around that. Pure annoying folk in their holidays. Might, might be best not to do it. And some sites, you know, are, uh, you can't fly it. Especially if, uh, ah, look, see that over there? That's the military base. Lossy mouth, so you, I, I would be amazed if it would let you fly it around here. 
so close to that to that airport. Super cool though, eh? I look cottage residents only. So that folk actually stay there. We're just stay at a lighthouse. Getting shown off. Now we'll head back. So we've got this other beach. I can't. It's only half ten. Got a whole day to go. Come on down for there, Moss. Moss is going to get her bum wet and she doesn't know it yet, look! She's just lying down for her to fling it and this tide's coming in, look, look, look! Ah! <laughs> oh my cloud in it again! Down one this time! Aye, so we're just coming along this railway. We're kind of doing it, I think it might be in reverse. Walk Highlands, I've got this on a route. Uh, and you can, walk high, all Walk Highland stuff now seems to have been, not only, well, they've always had the GPS waypoints that you can download for your GPS, but it looks now that they've transcoded all that into a ViewRanger route. So now you can, if you've got the ViewRanger app, you can just click on the link from Walk Highlands and it'll take you into the ViewRanger app route that's been made by Walk Highlands and it's on there so that's quite handy and then if you want you can pull the GPS from that or alter the route and etc etc so I think I'm riding the Reaper in reverse Ken so I I think this is the old railway this used to be an old railway line here we we're going to do another hike in between, but I decided what with the time and I want to get back in time to get set up for sunset with the camera down at Bow Fiddle Rock that I thought we'll do the walk in the morning, the one we've done, to the lighthouse and we'll go to the Scottish Dolphin Centre and go on one of the guided tours, the walking tours. It takes about an hour, uh, you go out. So I get there, but here they're out of season. The the it doesn't start till the first of April. The walking tours. They did have like this thing where you can go into this room and look at the underwater cameras that they've got and see what's happening actually out. It's live. That sounded really cool, but that wasn't going to be starting for like another couple of hours. So I, I spoke to them actually, and they were telling me all about different stuff. And the last day was like, "What are you interested in?" And I was like, "Everything." Just sort of an actually curious guy. I like all sorts of all time periods of history, you know, plants, well, botany, I guess, um, just all different kinds of animals. It's not like, oh, I'm mad for birds, but I'm no into whales, you know. I, I, I'm just, I'm quite fascinated by a lot of things. And I like to, I guess I like the acquisition of knowledge. I like learning stuff. So I was really looking forward to going on that and even doing the doing that thing, but the last he said, where you look at the live cams, the talk only lasts 20 minutes, so it wasn't worth spending two hours waiting for a 20 minute talk that would then mean I couldn't do this hike, so, and I wanted to do this hike, because there's caves and all that down the bottom, pretty cool. So when we're driving over here, there's the, there's this bit of harbour, well there's this wall with waves crashing over it, so I stops, gets my good, got my good DSLR out, and I'm standing right down there taking pictures of the waves crashing over. Of course, wanting to get close. What happens? Doosh, big wave right over my head, soaked me and my camera. And this isn't like a weather sealed camera, so I was like, oh, in the car with the swabs and all that, trying to dry it. So, got it dried, okay. No, no, no big, no biggie. It's all right. So I'll show you, you know, I'll show you the sequence of pictures I was taking, because I was taking burst pictures. So you can see it coming up and over and like soaking us in all the water and the lens. Here's Moss, look. What's she doing? Looking for treats? Are you looking for treats? Uh, hi there. Hi. So we're just going to crack on along this for a wee bit until it gets a bit more interesting. But it's nice, it's still a nice day. Look, my shoes get soaked. I literally get drenched. But this parmo gear and the walking tights, like I've said before, it's kind of like a wetsuit and because it's close to your skin it dries really quickly. Same with these, these are mesh, so they should dry relatively quickly. In fact, they're all, my, my clothes are already dry and my shoes are, I think it's more my socks that are a bit damp. But I've got a spare pair in the car, but I thought I'd just leave them on, see if they dry out. If not, I'll put the spare pair on for tonight when it gets cold. We'll get a wee bringe on and 
see what this coastline's like when we get down to the bottom. Get a look, there's meant to be a railway bridge as well. That'll be cool to go over an old time. Oh yeah, look. That's cool. Really nice bit of coastline. That beach was nice, eh? Really nice beach. Can't believe I get soaked though. See, there's a, there's a row, there's big rows of houses there, and I bet they see that all the time. And in fact, see when I got in the car, drive my camera, went back, got the pictures I was wanting, and remained dry. Even when I was in the car off the road, that was getting leathered in here. A boy pulled up in front of us with his girlfriend. He gets out, he's out the tripod, you know, like getting it all set up nice and all that. <laughs> he gets tsunami. <laughs> He gets tsunami as well, so the people in the houses are probably like looking out like, oh, here's another one, here, hey, Mon, here's another one. You know, so we're just waiting for someone to get engulfed off a wave. <laughs> I would be, because I, when I seen the boy, I was like, yes, take that. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. It's like you've been framed stuff, you know. I should have filmed it actually, because I knew it was coming. Because the ground was wet and I'd seen the waves lashing over where he was standing. But he's like, because the, the big ones are infrequent, he's like, aye, I'll get, I'll, I'll get all close. Tripod out. Oh, nice one. It's a shame we can't really see it, but this looks like a bridge like that one over there. And that's a drop right down there. Oh, yeah, it is. Pretty cool. Let's check the other side. So we've just came off. We we didn't walk. We walked to the end of that one, but it's shut off. We walk over that one and there's another one but it's shut off because other it leads onto the road and otherwise folk would try and drive across the full hang. Check this out. I couldn't understand this. Initially, if the Lord will, the word of God will be preached every Lord's Day. Are they missing a comma? Should it not be, if the Lord will, the word of God will be preached every Lord's Day. Am I right? Or am I right? Now, I've got a wee game for you. Try and guess which of these boats we would have if we could have one of them. Which one? That one. That one. That one. That one, 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 that one. Which boat would John have? I know which one I'd have. I'd have that one! <laughs> Look at it! Yes! What's that say? Old Grey Goose. That's the Old Grey Goose, by the way. It's the one for John. I probably wouldn't have actually had a thought, of, thought about it. Because, like, that one appeals to me. See the one with the grey, the Emily Ann. The one with the grey top and the the life ring kind of utilitarian looking with a wee cabin and all that like that speedboat one that's out of the question the, the yacht would be cool like well I don't know if you call that a yacht the sailing ones I, I mean I prefer that I prefer that old fashioned one the Osprey to this anyway oh you're getting tangled up that's one of those ones most tangles you up and your, the fit goes in there and you're right in. Hundreds of pounds worth of camera gear done. Done right in. And a... And a redneck for you. The light's kind of going down a wee bit. In fact, it's not really. Still relatively high in the sky. Yeah, I've changed my mind, I'd have that one. It's my, that one, that one looks the most capable seafaring vessel. And I'm into that, you know. Wait to see this, by the way. Oh-ho. 
Thomas Telford again. Bridges, aye. Telford, aye. He was the guy. Is that the guy that done the, the bridges that was that were uh, going into Glasgow when uh, the Kelvin walkway walker done? Was that Telford? Cool. This so Telford built this harbour. Hey, what what a dude! One of the best harbours in the Murray Firth. There's an old picture. Cool. That's the one I'd have bought a fucking big blonde suit there, look. Like. Look at us. Woo! Pure all that, innit? Pure all that. The, the walls are so high you can't see out of them. Look. Like. Uh. height. Well, chin height, chin height for John. What's this here? Some wee juke that you can get through. Ah, I think it might be. You wouldn't want to be going down, but anyway, we are swept out to sea again and drunk. This is one of these ones where I'll go around here and it'll tsunami me, won't it? Cause it's been up. Hey, give me some. Give me more some slack in case we need to do a runner. Right, back up you go. Eh, no, no not doing there. That's swept out to sea gear, Moss. Big freak wave coming round. What do you think, Mosey? You got a wee pal? Right, I'm gonna let you off. Yeah. How amazing is this, though? Oh, come on, man, look. It's, it's, what a beautiful day. It's been a brilliant day. Been up since the first alarm went off at five. I was down at the uh, Bow Fiddle Rock, I was at six, I think I was down there for six. I've just been out and about all day, so I have. Ah! So we've came along here, and now we're just going up over here. There's this cool cave here. You like this one? You like this cave, don't you? It's cool. Really cool. Look at this. That would have been that would have been horizontal at one point and as the earth's plates have moved. It's you know crushed, crumpled up the earth and it's buckled it up. Pushed it into the angle, that's all that's all sediment and shale and I I can't even it's, you can't even imagine that happening in formation. Can you see what's on there? How far does that go? Let's get my head torch out here. Get some light in this chat. Ah, just to there. Oh no! Come on! Push your toilet roll! At least someone's try at least tried to bury that shitey toilet roll. And then there's a can of what's that? Heineken or something. Dirty fuck. Oh, eh? Oh, what's that in there? Can I see it? And it's too dark. 
get the torch out, illuminate and piss you in shitty toilet roll. And the, look, there's someone's put a, a, a bag of dog shit there. And here's someone's left some incest sticks. Unbelievable! Just tearing my jacket off and all that. It's getting cold again. Anyway, check it out. Jenny as well. I don't quite know what's going on here because we've got Jenny's full stop well. Ah, look. But then there's been a stone here. Why is that there and not here? Unless her name is Jenny's. Do you know what I mean? Is her name Jenny's or is her name Jenny? If it was Jenny's, right, okay. And by the way, this this makes me feel no well. What's that all about? Look, that's just that's not right. <laughs> right, let's keep going. So I finished my hike, and uh, I went and got the car, and I brought it down to the bow, whatever. Here's another punter coming. The bow, whatever, bow fiddle rock. Um. Now it's half past five and there's like cars and cars of people pulling up and coming out with all this photography gear and I don't know if cause it's because this is what's referred to as the golden hour but it's the hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset where the light's best for getting pictures so that's why I was here dead early this morning. So it's either that or they're all going to be staying here tonight for when this so they're going to try and get the sunset pictures and then when the sun properly goes down see if the aurora comes out as well but um they're all you know buzzing with energy like got to get that best spot you know i can imagine and when i was walking over the top of the hill there was like oh, these tripods all lined up in a row <laughs> so and I'm down there with my little, like, 60 pound Argos tripod and, uh, my, my, uh, it's, it's expensive to me, that camera, you know, all in, it's over a grand. But, uh, they're, they'll be jumping about with, like, five grand cameras and three grand lenses and all this sort of stuff, so, me cutting about with my, my hiking tights on and my Argos tripod and cheap camera. If they get snotty, I'll just batter them anyway, so it doesn't bother me. Just now the light's quite flat, actually, because it's behind a doze of clouds. Otherwise, I'd be down there just now. It's just a doze of cloud, and it came out for a wee second there. But that cloud looks as if it's... I don't know if it's going to come out from behind that before it, before the sun actually goes down. It might. It's still... We're still an hour. But we'll see. She will like. Oh, hello. How are you? Are you a good girl? Oh, she's a good girl. Are you cuddling? Can you give me a cuddle? Can you give me a cuddle? Can you give me a kiss? Oh. Right, so I'm going to go and see Tomas. And, eh. Uh, and then we'll see what light later on. I was get, Do you know what? They actually put me off cooking my ravioli because I, I got into that whole thing like, oh, I better get down there. I might get down and there's no spots left. And uh, so I had, I've got ravioli and I'd, I had some sausage. And I was in the middle of chopping up the sausage and it was car after car piling up. So I just ate the sausage cold rather than... I was going to basically boil some water, put the sausage in it, boil the pasta. It only takes a minute drain it and then eat it but then I was like oh I'll just eat this sausage and leave the cooking till later on and get down there no way I'm not getting rushed that's how folk end up like being buyers you know what I mean so we'll just chillax here for a wee bit and um, wait and see if the sun gets better if it's not if it doesn't get better I'm just going to wait here till it gets dark and just look out and see if we can see the northern lights. If I can't, then there's not even any point going down. Because, you know, I'd, I'd got my, the pictures I was wanting of the actual rock this morning. And even though they're all down, it's it's it would be nice to have that in the foreground as a silhouette with the northern lights in the background. 
Uh, but I could just go up along the coast somewhere and just get a picture of the lights themselves. Although it's always better to have something else in there, you know. But uh, we'll see. Now I'm going to go there now anyway. Are you chomping at the bit for? Trets. Right, hold on, I'll give you one. Hopefully you can still see me. So, it's dark out. Um, the light came and went. It was nice, the, the sunlight hit the tops of the two peaks on the outcrop. So that was nice, nice lighting for getting some more pictures. So, this is the light level just now. It's about half seven, I believe. So the sun went down an hour ago, but of course there's still, um, that doesn't mean to say it goes pitch black then. Yeah, it's 22 minutes past seven. So we're going to wait here. And what up till it goes black, basically. Then I'll look to see if I can actually see the lights, the northern lights. If I can't, I'll probably just get out of the car and try and experiment with taking some night photography to see if I can do it, if it's any good and there's any stars or anything that come out that look cool I'll go down and I'll see if I can get some pictures like that down actually at the outcrop if I can't, I'll probably drive back to the graveyard and get the head down for the night so I can get up early bells tomorrow morning and do a shoot down the road ideally though, fingers crossed there'll be a lot of nice northern light stuff going on and that'll be the first time I'll see them and I can get a picture. In fact, I was talking to one of the photographers there who's he's driven up from Ayrshire and he said, oops, hang on, bloody hell. He said that, eh, quite funnily, he said, if I can get a picture of the Northern Lights with that outcrop in the foreground, you can bury me after that. <laughs> so. That's how much uh, he said he was obsessed with trying to see the Northern Lights till he went to Iceland. Bloody light! Okay, so we'll go and we'll we'll wait. I'm just gonna. I've got. I've had pings going on my phone, so I'll see what they are, and then we will see what happens later. Morning, you guys. Oh, hold on. There's boss up. This is. Why we're rolling? <sighs> and there's the wee Moscow. Good morning. Are you coming to say hi? Oh! <laughs> kisses! Good morning, kisses. Oh, sneezer. Sneezer. Yeah. Did you have a good sleep? Oh! <sighs> Let's see what the weather's like. Looks like an alright morning. We'll get the sleeping bags away and head off back down the road. So that's us packed. Hi, <laughs> so it's still pretty fritzel if you look at the thermometer, it's what's that, one, two, two degrees Celsius or a uh, 32, 30, 34 degrees Fahrenheit. So aye, it's still pretty, still pretty cold at night, you know. Yeah, let's head off. So we've got three, three point five five four hours till we get back down the road, and then I've got another forty five minutes. I've got stuff at work. I'm going to go and get a shower and all that. 
so maybe half twelve, one o'clock, I'll get home at, and then I've got all Sunday afternoon to relax. Aye, so I'm just away to get my audio book on. There's more driving, look. I'm just going to get myself involved with some of this pumpkin and sage ravioli. We'll get it cooked up because I'm feeling a bit peckish. And it's starting to go. Boilo, boilo. So let us see. Ah, I don't know if you're allowed ravioli. Oh, we fart! <laughs> You got a fright. Mmm. Could do with some pepper. Got a Venice. Hello. Do you want to try a bit? Oh, she doesn't like it. Oh, I want more for John. Do you not like it? I thought you didn't like it. What you put? What you want more for then? The idea was that I was going to chop, slice up that, slice or dice that smoked sausage into this as well, that doing quite nice. And you just set it right off. Hey. Mmm. That's that. Tanned. I'll wash this when we get down the road. Leave that like that. And for dessert, we're going to be rocking a wee carrot cake. Raw fruit and nut bar. And you want a wee special doggy treat? Is that what you want one? You want it the new? Right, I'll go and disassemble this and we'll hit the road again. <laughs> 